Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock to Your Studio and today I'm sharing with you day six of Art Journaling Habit 2018. This is a month-long daily art journaling challenge that is brought to you by the Facebook group Art Joy of Sharing, which is myself and Peg Robinson. And there are one word prompts for each day and you can follow along. If you need the prompt list, you can go to Art Joy of Sharing Facebook group asked to join. Make sure that you answer the questions and then the file will be in there or you can just print it off this video if you want to. Just take a screenshot and do it that way. And then if you post your pictures, make sure that you use the hashtag ArtJournalHabit2018 so that we can find your art and give it a thumbs up or a heart or whatever that, that sort of social media is asking for. So to start out this page today, I was recently in um, Los Angeles area. Well, I was actually in the northern desert part above Los Angeles, but I went there for a, a fundraiser, um, formal tea, uh, the tea for Titania, which is a fundraiser for therapy dogs that was started by a, f a friend of mine. Uh, family, friends, and she passed away from cancer, but she was really, uh, when she was in the children's hospital, she was really uplifted by the therapy dogs that came to visit, and so she wanted to have a charity to support that for other children who might become sick. So I went, I drove up there, and I, whenever I go to Los Angeles, I always see these amazing overpasses. Even when I lived there a long time ago, when I was going to school for, to be a makeup artist, I would always see these and I thought they were so artistic and sculptural looking. Um, they made me think about like all the people that live in Los Angeles all going the same way. Often there was, you know, traffic and you would have to stop and wait and you just had to factor that into your life um, because that's just the way it was. But I always wanted to take pictures of them because they were just so cool looking to me. But also, you can't really take a picture when you're driving. It's not a good idea. <laughs> so when I was there recently, when we were driving through, I took a couple pictures. They're from the car. They're not great pictures. But one of the pictures I took is something similar to this that, that has a lot more detail. But I didn't draw in every single line. But when I saw the prompt parallel which is the prompt for day six. It just, I just thought of these parallel lines of these overpasses and highways and, and also the idea of everyone having parallel lives who are all driving along on this structure, all going to work, all coming home from work, all going to the same places, doing the same things. I always thought everyone should carpool, but they never do. Like, you don't see very many people in the carpool lane. There's always one person in a car. If everyone, if all those people had two people in the car, it would save so much energy and time and smog pollution and whatever. But, you know, that's another thing. So I just wanted to draw this kind of a structure uh, for my parallel page. And that's the reason that I picked the map piece from California. It's just part of California. Uh, I, I collage that onto the background. Remember this this art journal is a simple journal made out of junk mail. So there's a lot of text and writing on my pages that needs to be covered up. Sometimes I can cover it with gesso but most of the time it probably needs some sort of a collage background. So I picked this map piece from California because that's where the idea was from. And then I collage that on using Liquitex Matte Gel Medium and my new glue brush, which I really love, which is a Tim Holtz Distress product. I just love it. I'm having so much fun with my glue brush. I may want to collage even more than I already do because <laughs> I'm crazy about collage. But um, then I, I want to just kind of mellow out that background a little bit. So I use some uh, Liquitex Basics Gesso, white gesso over the top of the matte piece just to kind of push it back so that it's not so prominent in the picture. And then now I'm using a Stabilo All Graphite Pencil to draw all my lines. I'm looking at the picture. I know you can't see it, uh, but I pulled it up on my um, pad 
and I'm looking at it to try to remember what this looks like, you know, and try to get most of the lines correct. Like I said, the, all the lines are not there. I left some of them out. I wanted it to be simple enough and not overwhelmed by so many lines that you didn't understand when you looked at it what it was. I mean, I think if anybody's ever seen an overpass like this, they know what this is. They know what this image is. But it's not perfect. It's not detailed. It's, um, it's simple. So then I'm using my new toy. <laughs> I got this at the Myrtle Beach Art Retreat. Uh, the company Pentel sent us a few products to play with. One of them is a pack of these Pentel Aquash water brushes. And um, I mean, it's a water brush. It's a nice water brush, but is it the best? I don't know, but um, a quality product. But what I'm really having fun with is this Pentel Pocket, Pentel Pocket Brush. Pocket Brush, I think that's what it's called. I'll link in the description box below to Amazon where you can purchase it. It's a little brush, a little pen with a brush, with a synthetic brush like the, the Aquash has the same type of a brush on it. It's made out of some type of synthetic fibers. And in it comes with two ink cartridges and the ink cartridges are India ink. So the cool thing about that is that the India ink is permanent when dry, but while it's still a little bit wet, I can make it wash like a watercolor. And all India ink is like this. In fact, I have a couple sets of bottles of India ink in all different colors from Dr. P.H. Martin's. And I can use it like a watercolor, but then it's permanent when it's dry. So it's really great for a mixed media. It's a great great stuff for mixed media because you can put a layer of that on, let it dry, and then you can go over other, other, you can go over it with other wet media and it doesn't run. So I'm going around all my um, drawn lines that I drew with my graphite colored Stabilo pencil. Uh, it's a soft graphite, easy to draw with, and it also blends with water. Um, and I thought I was going to do that, but then I then I remembered I had that new toy and I wanted to play with it. So uh, I was going to wash all the the lines that I had drawn with water in the same way. But it's actually much cooler to have this black indie ink. It's much more dramatic of an effect and easy to do as long as you just draw a couple lines. You you blend them before they're dry and then you draw, draw a couple more lines blend those before they dry. And I think the effect is exactly what I wanted. It turned out perfectly. <laughs> so um, I like it. I'm happy with it. And the, the other thing that I always wanted to do when I was younger and I used to live in LA, I wanted to take pictures like this and then develop them um, in black and white so that they were very and, and, you know, turn up the contrast and develop them into good black and white photos. And then use some of that uh, photo tinting color to make bright colors over the top of them. I always thought that was an art I would like to do. I thought that's something I want to do. But for one, I didn't have a good camera. For two, <laughs> I didn't have any way to, to develop anything. And for three, I didn't have the colors. Uh, I was poor. I was a student. And so that that idea never came to fruition. But what I'm doing today is similar to the idea that I had back then. I'm going to wash over it with bright color. And I'm gonna do it with watercolors because I know this page isn't gonna get wet. The watercolors are gonna be on the top. But if it was just another layer I was adding, I would get out the colorful India inks that I have uh, from Dr. P.H. Martin's brand and do them with that. I did make a little bit of a mistake right there. Um, the lowest lines should be behind instead in front of that post, so I'm going to have to fix that later, but I do fix it. But I go through all the lines. I draw them in the black India ink, then I wash it, then I want to write on there so I'm making some again parallel lines so that I can write some words on there because one thing about my writing is it tends to start in a good place and then it goes up 
it just wants to go up. And so it's always crooked. So it's a good idea to draw lines so that I can try to stay um, on the lines and make my writing straight. So I did that with the regular pencil that I use normally to draw with. And then I'm going to go over it with these Fabric Castell illustration pens that I have, which are also permanent. I believe they are in India ink as well. So I have them in all different tip sizes. You can see I have two packs there that have, I was looking for the small and uh, I ended up using the 1.5 and then I used the small on my little drawing down here of the one single car that's driving along. Of course, in the picture there was multiple cars, but I thought that having the lonely car there was more of an impact than trying to draw a bunch of cars on there. So I think I do find my small finally. Oh, and then I thought maybe I'd draw a second car that was, you know, the parallel lives idea, but I ended up deciding that wasn't a good idea. So now I'm getting out my concentrated watercolors from Dr. P.H. Martin's. Uh, these are bright. They are intense, intense colors. In fact, I had some just dried in the palette from when I used them the last time. And those were still just as intense. I didn't really have to add a bunch. I get, guess I did add a drop or two, but mostly I just used the colors that were already in the palette. I wanted bright colors, um, warm colors, cool colors to contrast against each other. I started out with yellows, oranges, and reds on the top um, piece of the highway. And then I moved to some greens, which are cooler to contrast against it. Um, I added blue, I added purple, but my idea was mostly bright colors, um, no no browns or anything. And because it's watercolor, it's going right over the top of this India ink that's already shaded because I've used the water brush on it to, you know, wash it and make, sh make shadowing. So I don't have to do any more shadows because the India ink's already there. It's not moving. It's permanent. It's dried on there. And it was a it was a fun effect. Um, really enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying the series. I will be making a video every day this month with uh, my junk journal, um, making a page using the prompts every day. So if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below if you have one. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and of course turn on your notification bells if you want to know when my videos come out, but I can tell you they're going to be 7 a.m. every day for the entire month. I know that. Don't know what's going to happen in December, but I know this is what I'm doing in November. Um, also, go and search that hashtag, hashtag Art Journal Habit 2018, and you can find other people's art out there. There's quite a few people already participating, and there's lots of great inspiration out there for you if you'd like to start art journaling or you just need some inspiration. So here I am using some Posca pen ink which is an acrylic ink in my Posca pen and I just press it down onto the plastic palette to get a little puddle and then I use that to touch up that area where the lines went um, in front instead of behind like they were supposed to on that one big column and then I'm just touching up here and there um, finishing up my coloring so you know that's pretty much it for the page it's I'm going to try to use different products on different days and today was indie ink and watercolor so um, I hope you enjoyed it I'll see you tomorrow thanks bye-bye